you can criticize TSM's draft last game pretty heavily, uh, and I still like what Cloud9 did, and I don't think Cloud9 has a reason to change up too heavily unless TSM forces them off champions. We heard what the analyst desk had to say. We'll see what the players think. We actually heard that, you know, the coaches can listen in now, so there's a bit more instruction already given on to how to correct the uh, wrongs and make them all right going into game two. This is where TSM tries to step back up. Gangplank, Twisted Fate taken out already. They don't like the map pressure of either of those. It's not even one or two. You it's know, the combo. Me and Dabo just started chuckling and smiling because it's <laughs> quick kind adjustment. Of the obvious like quick reaction is like, ah, ban out everything that just beat us. So then this is Morgana, <laughs> but, right? This you is know, Morgana. <laughs> if it if that's actually, you know, the street two strong, like really global influences that were really the problem for TSM and were you know, caught, uh, allowing Cloud9 to make oh. all these cross-map plays, and they target those two right off the bat. Uh, they're going to leave the Nidalee up, as they talked about on the desk, and try and uh, maybe snag a first pick. Yeah. Ah, Cloud9 happy to call that bluff and say, we'll just trade you then. Cloud9 probably will just go with the Kindred once again for Rush. Yeah, it's got to feel good having that result on a champion and then just being able to roll back into it. That'll feel very comfortable for him. We know that is a comfort pick as of last game. Cloud9 to answer back. A team that doesn't really show. The Nidalee actually hasn't been locked in, but we see Cloud9. One to take their time on their picks. One to never hover, never show, and try to yeah. really kind of play that mind game along with the rest of their flexing. Yeah, meanwhile, still a little bit of indecisiveness there for TSM. Hovering Nidalee for about 25 seconds yeah. before locking it in. It's a, it's a really minor thing, but... We do like to pick on it often because it gives Ooh. Cloud9 so much Boom. more time. Right. And sensing that hesitation, Cloud9 quickly goes, Grom Kindred, back at you, TSM. Yeah, reducing the amount of time that TSM have to discuss with each other and figure out what they want to go with. Cloud9, very clear mm -hmm. game plan here. Go right back to the Brom, uh, there for a high, and uh, pick that Kindred up for Rush. He's happy to farm it out. We'll see, though. Sven Skaren on the Nidalee. He is set up to try and make some early moves. Yeah. See if they pick some strong lanes whenever you have this. You definitely want to pick strong lanes with Nidalee. Try and get in there. Uh, maybe they will look to invade on Rush and try and attack him. I'd definitely be interested to see that. He's the guy that puts his foot forward, so it's definitely on Haunter to step up. Yeah, and very little has been revealed by Cloud9, so TSM As always. would also just want to either do flex picks or power picks here. They didn't have great success going with the early Azir last time, so. We'll see if they end up going for it again. And they're 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 now allowing Cloud9, if they do these two picks, to counter pick both solo lanes freely. Double especially last game. It was a it was a blind pick Azir, now another blind pick Azir. The confidence for Bjerks in here. These uh, are allowing Cloud9 to just set up around it. I mean, while they are again blind picking Azir, they these are two of the most picked champions across the world That's true. Uh, in the That's current true. meta right Malachi now. Malachi really with surging. the recent buffs. Now he's got That's magic resist. It's actually a huge change. The other thing that Maokai does provide now, the huge increase on duration timers for the saplings does give you a significant amount more of vision because they last almost yeah. a minute. That's almost, that's half of a trinket ward. Yeah, and they're most picked for a reason. They work against a lot of different matchups. One strategy you do for blue side is you just straight up do power picks and then the red side could be used to try and pick counters. And TSM very clearly just going with the high priority, high presence pick band champions with their first three choices. Nautilus being locked in. That's too yeah. much play of that coming from Cloud9, even on the second half of this split. You're not going to be seeing that. Very well, interesting. If they run it in the top lane, it will be yet another unique champion for Balls yeah. in the spring. He already had the largest top lane champion pool with 11 unique picks in 18 games. Uh, this will make it 12 in 20. Now I'm looking at what Jensen would want to run into this Azir. Maybe the Zed. I know he doesn't really like Lissandra uh, mid, so I don't know. I don't know if they again try a double teleport. Maybe he has put in a lot more time on that champion though, and they try and pull another, you know, global game plan here and go with a double teleport. But uh, I, I think it would be more yeah. along the uh, lines of something to assassinate Bjergsen. I think he would like to pressure him that way. Yeah, you look at their team right now. They're they do have the Nautilus top lane, but they have a lot of physical damage, so you wouldn't True. you wouldn't think of a Zed, even though Zed would normally be your assassin counterpick to an Azir. He's had a lot of success on Orianna. I mean, LB could be there. Split. Yep. Yeah, versus Maokai, you cannot afford to have a single damage type. You have to diversify yeah. 
uh, your damage profile for your team, Kong, because if you allow Maokai to build straight tank... Whoa. whoa, okay. So, well, the other thing is that Kindred does do magic damage that sneaks up on you. Yeah. They're going to still have to roll over this, though, because Maokai being allowed to build full armor tank is very scary. Here's the thing that I think Cloud9 is doing. They won last game in 25 minutes. So even though Hauntzer could <laughs> How build, much armor like, can you buy in 20 minutes, buddy? <laughs> yeah, you can't buy that much armor in 20 minutes, really. And also, Bjergsen doesn't like to itemize armor, neither does the Nidalee. There's a lot of things that will not be able to deal with the triple physical damage of Cloud9 yeah. very early in the game. And they're going to just have to work around Hauntzer's Maokai. Because yep. that guy, if the game goes 45 minutes, will pretty much be unkillable. The thing is, it's yeah. so hard to work around a Maokai into an Azir, oh, yeah. into a Jan. Like, there's a lot of peeling for the backline. So if your game plan is to work around that Maokai, then you get to the two new stops of the Soldier Wall and Monsoon from Janna. It's yeah. hard to even uh, get back there and assassinate him. And setting up, bringing back a Maokai, it's like riding a bike. It's not exactly a highly mechanical <laughs> champion to use. You might get a few max range twisted advances, but you're good to go. You got the Yellow Star from Janna, the, that, the tried and true of his old past. So these guys are definitely going back to a little bit of comfort, but still have a great comp. And again, coming through with a few blind pick things, feeling very confident in this best of series against Cloud9, who are now ahead one game. As the teams load in for round two, keep updating those Twitter votes. Por favor, hashtag TSM win or hashtag C9 win. We'll get those tallied up once again as we get partially through the game. Like I said, maybe after the mastery keystones. Who knows? It's going to be a good game, and we'll probably be focused on that anyways. We're jumping onto the rift for game two. Now it's going to be TSM on the blue side and Cloud9 on the red side. We are on the Rift. And the other thing about choosing Zed as your assassin, uh, while he's not going to take teleport, you do have the option of turning into a split pusher and trying to, again, draw TSM apart. You want to pull this TSM team apart because their battle lines are really strong. If they group up as a team and they have set Maokai front, uh, you know, backline and back, uh, Jenna protecting them, then it's hard to crack through that five on five. Mm -hmm. But Cloud9's nice strategy is not to crack through the five on five, it's to pull you apart across the map and pick you off. Exactly. And TSM's going to have to be very organized, decisive, and clean if they want to be able to force Cloud9 into team fights and shut down the split pushing opportunities. So while this isn't as punishing of a team composition for Cloud9, they don't have the Twisted Fate and Gangplank to punish over chases as heavily, they're still going to be able to attack from multiple different angles. And TSM would still have to do what they haven't been able to do in order to win this game. So Cloud9 differences this game, obviously not Twisted Fate mid, but also no teleport there. Kill pressure coming in from Jensen. And instead of the cleanse this time, Bjergsen wants to shut that down with exhaust, rightfully so. A lot of targets that could instantly pop him down. And it looks like we may actually get that swap start here. Yep, everybody got the exact same wards down. Pretty standard uh, vision setting up the standard lane swap. And uh, Sven Skarin also gets down the traps. And I have to say, this needs to be Sven Skarin's time to shine. Uh, they first picked the Nidalee, and then they power pick both their solo lanes because sometimes the conventional wisdom with Nidalee is she has so much pressure early game that you can get away with whatever lanes you want because if the other team tries to get aggressive lanes, they immediately get punished by Nidalee. And that's what TSM need to do. They need to get through the early game to where Maokai's got his armor, they can set up their 5-on-5, five five, and you're fighting over these neutral objectives yep. where the TSM, as a group of five, could just try and bully uh, Cloud9 out. Hans are sneaking some experience in that brush. Oh. Dangerous move. Uh, we've seen it before. Does pay off here a little bit. I was kind of hoping to see him stay there for as long <laughs> as possible. Impact special back from last year. Yep. Try and get that level three. No deals. It's going to be Cloud9. Three members on the top turret first. And that turret is nowhere be near being reached in the bot lane just yet. A very slow push here by TSM onto that turret. Yeah, I actually really wish TSM would try and get a little bit more uh, bold early game and get some defensive wars down so they could predict some of Cloud9's mm -hmm. lane swaps a little bit better. Because I think Cloud9 absolutely wants the lane swap game. It creates a more open map, and that's where they're able to punish TSM. I think TSM's strengths would be in the standard lanes so they can utilize Bjergsen's double lift ability to get CS advantages over their opponents yep. early. They just can't do that with these lane swaps. That's two of the highest CSD at 10 coming in from Bjergsen and double lift. Something we figured coming in for this team that they would still require a bit of resources and the team's actually been able to allocate that. It's just getting it to a point where they get their core items and fight before the other team has been an issue lately. Yeah, I mean, when Jensen first came over here, one of the first things that he was actually criticized for was his ability to just CS in lane yeah, in, that's true. in regular matchups for people. But look at him now. He's 5C up 
CS up on Bjergsen, doing just fine with the minion wave right on his side of the map. Yeah. He can play safe as well, doesn't have to cheat to one side here, doesn't have to really worry about the giant collapse that can happen in lane swap games if the other team yeah. gets really risky. Definitely come into his own, kind of knowing his brand, knowing what kind of a player he is. It changed from Incarnation Solo King to LCS stage for sure. There were a lot of plays being made, and it took a while for him to build back up to that, yeah. being able to have that confidence to make solo plays. It's definitely a different stage when the criticism is coming from every angle. He seems to shielded it off and has been doing very well this split. There's another reason Cloud9 is back on top. Yeah, and something kind of strange is happening here. TSM used all of their trinket wards into the blue side jungle of C9, and mm -hmm. they saw Rush do that. It's not necessarily how many wards you place, it's what you do with that information. Cloud9 put one ward deep in the lane uh, where Hauntzer is now walking up, and it's expired. So they really haven't done anything with that. But as soon as Fenskeren saw that Rush is on the other side of the map, you expect him to go kill Balls as Nautilus and instant he pushes up. But he's killing Gromp right now. Like, I hope he goes for him soon because this play has been a long time in the making. And they do have They beams. know that they the can interrupt not there. Balls' teleport if Balls just tries to teleport out as well. Monster can save right. his smash. He knows this is the fight. He's got to be baited in on this one. This is going to be first blood. Balls will be going down. It's going to take him a while. And the team's going to do what they can to add a bit more pressure. He almost takes out Haunter in the process. That's first blood. But with knowledge of the jungler top lane, they're going to go on to double lift. And that's going to be the assist and kills going over here to three members. Yellowstar is going to make it out alive with a nice Howling Gale. But it looks like they will lose that turret as well. Yeah, once again, it's about what you do with the information. Rush walks into a jungle that he knows is warded. Essentially, Balls puts him in position to be ganked. I don't like how fall, far Balls was playing up because mm -hmm. that was a pretty obvious gank from Svenskaren. But then as soon as the gank was revealed, C9 boldly goes for a 3v2 dive, not dissuaded by the failed 5v3 dive they had last game, pulls off a kill onto doublelift, and the denial on doublelift would be greater than the denial on Balls as long as Svenskaren can't turn this one around, but he's trying. Yeah, both kills did go to the junglers. Here we go, Spear oh. lands. Hit him with it. Cannot get the swipe down. Rush well, makes it out. Two. There's the TP. Haunter's going to not have Both the lockdown. Canceled. He stopped it. Good call on that. Balls as well. Stopped his teleport. Yeah, Balls is going to need to head up to the top side because there's a pretty big wave that Haunter's got building up here on the Maokai that's about to crash in there. Neither of them have teleport, so somebody should go up and catch that. This is what we said Haunter, or rather Sven Skarin, sorry, needs to be doing. Adding that pressure. This is the time to shine. You got the Nidalee first pick. You got to produce results. Sneaky being sneaky, yeah. and it looks like they do not like the pressure TSM is trying to put into the jungle. Who gets themselves in a sticky situation here, though? And it looks like they are going to have to back out. Uh, so nine, that is. Balls is going to lose a couple of CS up at that top turret as well because he stayed mid with Jensen trying to pressure into the mid turret. Uh, they didn't get much mid turret damage. Oh, cannon minion. That's yeah, he lost a cannon. Uh, he actually catches a lot of the wave. <gasps> I'm with Kobe, though. That was a very strange play by Balls. I don't know what he accomplished by holding pressure against Bjergsen in the turret no. with Jensen, unless they were going to send Jensen to collapse on Svenskaren in the jungle, which, which also didn't happen. So, yeah. so far, the early pressure of Nidalee is outpacing Rush a little bit. They managed to trade ganks, uh, but then Svenskaren was able to get in to the enemy jungle mm -hmm. quickly after that. It's very minor, though. Definitely a lighter six, level six, I should say, for this game. We're not seeing half as much teleporting or roaming around the map from Cloud9. It's much more confined to the lanes this time. Yellow Star, however, will be getting a bit of a roam on with double lifts. They'll just get knowledge pretty much of where the jungle is. So, one other thing um, that we kind of touched on is, you know, okay, so obviously Maokai is going to want to build a lot of armor versus team comp because for the team fight, you get a lot of value out of that. But one of the things about all these top lane matchups that we're seeing so often with all these tanks is how strong the uh, cowl is, spectral cowl in these matchups because a lot of the damage from the actual tanks and trading in lane is magic damage and you proc that regeneration over and over on that uh, mm -hmm. when you're in, in tank fights and that's right. one of the reasons why we see the you know, quote unquote wet noodle fights so often where they don't get a lot of work done. But Hunter's probably not going to want to go for that because it, for the team fight it makes so much more sense to go full armor. Uh, so Balls actually might be able to make something happen in a one versus one if he goes cowl and Hunter does not. Yeah, right. I would say it's definitely less than in previous patches because there's a couple things that happened that were pretty crucial. Very true. Uh, the damage on the E from Nautilus was greatly reduced, oh. as well as the MR per level being on Hunter. So I actually don't think he'll need it on Maokai based on the base sustain. Oh. Is that it? Burning. 
Flash is out. Flash is see. Death Mark, Ooh, yeah. But it does get him out of range of right. a potential shadow the kill. The shadow is there. Gonna go for it. Hiding under his, his wall. So Jensen actually goes hard, gets the alt out of mid lane. Not the exhaust though, just the flash. So it could be a repeat. Spence Garen trying to push now Berkson Rush out of his jungle. Also held onto his exhaust yeah. throughout that as well. So he does still have that at least. Feels that it's safe. Well, I guess the damage is already done. Knew he wouldn't die to the death mark without the swirly over his head. And Cloud9 getting a few, not even early early, early wards, but deep wards. Just one there on the invade as they go in to try and deny some jungle. Rush towards the top. More denial on that side. And it's much more of an even game here as we start this one off. Yeah, Sven Skarin has been the one to push the tempo here. And with a deep ward onto Rush, and uh, mid lane advantage with the Azir being able to come over, this could be an easy moment. steal for him. Yeah. But does he get more? Because Azir is here. Oh, wow. TSM really working a few steps ahead here, thinking of the play before it really needs to happen. And I don't think this can even be closed down by Cloud9. That death mark is still down, so they're just using the regular abilities on this one. Sven Skarin back in. Depth charge forces him out. And Yellowstar is trying to help from over the wall. Hauntzer gets a kill with Vengeful Maelstrom as he throws down the ultimate. And it looks like forced to back out with a few kills on either side. Sneaky does get red buff for that, but he had to flash for it on Lucian. And again, TSM very happy to go for these trades back and forth in the early game here. They're setting themselves up for the strong mid-game team fight. Mm -hmm. Towers uh, still standing on the opposite side. They had only traded the first ones in the lane swap instead of going and trading second ones this time, not allowing that extra room for Cloud9 to work with. And when this started, Rush uh, was trying to get this red buff, but Sneaky had just recalled on Lucian, so the whole time this fight was happening, Doublelift was getting free time in the bottom lane. And you can see how much faster Bjergsen was to that because Jensen was also coming up from the lane. And then Cloud9 tried to turn this around, but they're just so far behind on this play. Hauntzer is here before Ball. Bjergsen was there before Jensen. Lucian comes in at the very end, and now we're going for Jensen. Oh, Fate's call, and that could be it. He flashes as well, but the rend and a bit of extra damage take him down. The roam from double of yellow star to gank mid lane yeah. here, leaving their bottom lane. That does mean that Cloud9 can pressure bottom lane, but it's an even exchange. Mid lane's wide open as well, and TSM got the kill, so. Yeah, I think it's a huge continuation of the play because Double Lift has shoved that bottom lane up so far that he was able to go missing yep. without necessarily being detected. And the fact that Cloud9 has almost no wards on the map uh, currently. But when they see someone, they respond elsewhere. And they do get a turret, which Goldwise makes the trade beneficial. Until it gets traded for the top. Turret. In which case, it's still a <laughs> It's the continuation of the play. No, no the worry, game. wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> All right, Hunter claims the top one. Gold for himself as well. They want more money onto this Malachi. He's already got one kill, assist, and the extra solo tower gold there. So he'll be ramping up. Pretty much all that money is going to go into his Sunfire and some extra armor. The clock is ticking here for Cloud9. Some extra yeah. little bit of Devour damage, though. That's five more on hit magic damage. Yeah, he has two. <laughs> Stacks of his Kindred passive as well, Ooh. which isn't bad for 12 minutes, but they are they are not looking nearly as good as they did in Game 1. And TSM yep. has cleaned up a lot of the stuff we talked about. They have Sven Skarin on a jungler who is in a much better matchup, and we said this game was going to be on Sven. So far, he's been doing very well with the pressure advantage and making Cloud9 pay for it. He's just being everywhere right now in Jensen's hair, giving him trouble. And we kind of see this Yerkson pick of uh, the blind Azir not being as big if, as a, a burden as it was last game. He's able to just stay in the mid lane. It's double lift that's trying to get fed here. Can be protected by an Azir no matter what late game. And Yellowstar has been on that roam too. We're seeing this, what TSM really wanted to put together. And Bjergsen is actually rushing with the Zonias. So definitely going to take a hit on DPS, but he'll be so much more safe. Mm -hmm. Like Kai, who's right. pretty much dead here in enemy territory. Yeah, this is one of those... Uh, How long missions. can you run for? <laughs> one of those secret missions gone horribly wrong, where they see you right as you walk in. Oh, fancy. Someone feet. betrayed him. They gave him up. So top lane push. Let's clean up in the mid lane. Doesn't th look like balls will get too much off of this one. But a whole bunch of follow me from high tries to waste the time of TSM. 23,000 to 20.5 right now. Cloud9 actually falling behind at this point. We saw the stats last game, and TSM has been able to kind of flop that at 15 minute stat into their favor. 
Yeah, I mean, it's a just very a, big lead. Very yeah. happy to now move control into both Riverside, I think. Uh, Rush is actually making a move towards this mark. I don't think he's that crazy to risk going for it. Just cleaned up, up some scraps in his jungle. But TSM trying to work their way over here. They need to continue to move as five, hold on to the advantage that they have, mm -hmm. their power. Try and pressure Cloud9 and force them to miss out on some CS. There goes that mark. Right into the Rift Scott Blair. This is been quite clean from TSM, which you would not have expected oh. after seeing the way they lost game one. Caster curse. Yeah. <laughs> clean <laughs> reset of the Rift. Yeah. Were we were we were beneficial to TSM chat in our caster cursing? Apparently. <laughs> I haven't double checked the stats myself. But seven and four when I cast TSM games. Okay, fair enough. This split. TSM right now doing much better this game. Actually, stark difference. It kind of looks like the other game with names switched. We're seeing the same results here for TSM that Cloud9 was having. And they're not letting go. When they get the lead, usually we actually see TSM work. Those advantages, Hauntzer can usually provide enough of a nuisance on the side lane for the rest, or the other four, yeah. to make the big advantages. Play. I know Hauntzer likes playing 1v1 champions, likes killing his opponent and mm -hmm. taking those fights. But he's going to feel like a god in this game. Uh, he's already got Sunfire completed. I actually feel like he's going to turn that into probably a Randuin's on top of it with this extra Giant's Belt. Yeah. And it will be really hard for Cloud9 to take him down. We'll see, though. Maybe some yeah. uh, Cloud9 hold down until they get Last Whispers. She's got going. decent mechanics in those fights. When you see him on a tanky poppy and he can mm -hmm. keep shoving, pushing, he's making right decisions. So he's on the, or on the Maokai. He's... Arcane are uh, smashing and twisted advancing the right targets as well. It's good to have them in there for a smashing long period. And advancing. Of time. That's right. <laughs> That's the new Pentakill album. Yep, <laughs> smashing and advancing. <laughs> Got it. And they're just going to continue to try and punish Cloud9 for picking up for him. farm. This is kind yeah. of a reversal of what we saw last game. Rush my boy. Just a flash away. Yikes. Think a lot think of defense is being used. Think about the Maokai build, I feel like that Giant's belt should sit and you should go for Frozen Heart next against the multiple auto attackers. Yeah, cooldown reduction is also incredibly good on Maokai, so overall Frozen Heart is just hugely efficient for him. His flash is Also, up. Sneak is going to take a long time to get crit, so I agree. Yeah. That Twisted Advanced Flash play. See the back line. There's not much other than balls and high here that have to stick to those squishy targets. Jensen's going to be going in. Rush will be looking to use his all. It'll be interesting to see how Cloud9 plays these fights. TSM, yeah. not so much backing up, but getting themselves full vision right across the outside of C9's base makes it so easy to go from lane to lane. Yeah, they don't have to force any crazy occurrences in this game. They don't want, you know, unexpected things to happen. Yeah. When you are so confident in your team comp from draft phase, uh, you just want to get to those late game team fights where you've built your items, you can play the strengths there, have Maokai on the front line. Bjergsen's got his Zonia's completed. Double lift has plenty of protection. Uh, as long as he stands close to Yellowstar or Bjergsen, they both have ways mm -hmm. to try and save him. I mean, even as Zed, who's really good at getting to the back line, through all of this, like Maokai just point and clicks on you once yeah. and, and you're trapped. You're bopped. Yeah. The only worry I'd see for Cloud9 here is they've had trouble closing out games in the last little bit. Mm, whereas, you could say that. Whereas Cloud9 has been very good at closing out games. So when Cloud9 had the big advantage in game one, they closed the game up by 25 minutes. Whereas TSM's had this 3,000 gold lead for about the past five minutes. Yeah. And yeah. it's still 3,000 gold. I mean, yeah, there's, there, it is a double-edged sword being confident in your team comp and safe and, you know, relying on scaling. Whereas, I feel like a lot of the games where TSM have actually lost with these early gold leads, you know, um, thrown the games, have been in mistakes, like just mechanical mistakes within the team fights in the late game. Um, sometimes they get pulled across the map uh, going for one objective, and then someone's not there on time for right. a team fight, yet they start the team fight anyway. So, they will have to keep together, strengthen numbers. Yep. Although I have to also say, Cloud9 is not the type of team that lets themselves get bled out. At some point in this true. game, like, this, this would normally be if this was a TSM versus it's not Cloud9. <laughs> <laughs> I would think it's like a 50-minute game 
<laughs> that we're about to have because TSM is behind on dragons. Their gold lead's only about 3,000, but they have a lot of map control. What about immortals? So they'd wait They're for not about cloud five. Nine. <laughs> yeah. Anyone who's not Cloud9 or Immortal, <laughs> this game would be like 15 minutes long in the North American LCS. But this one I feel like would trend to be shorter because as TSM yeah. is going to be approaching those three, four, and five dragons, I think Cloud9 is going to be trying to make some aggressive plays and force TSM into a mistake. Yeah, that, I mean, that's what you expect from them if you're looking historically at these players. Um, High is the one who has those highlight plays where yeah. even if Cloud9 lose at the end, you know, High's trying to make those secret missions work and sneaking to the back line, trying back door, even when they're down 10,000 gold. So far, those plays this game have kind of ended in High dying by himself. They haven't <laughs> been able to get too much, so they've been calling off those and have so far been waiting for TSM to make a move. You were just saying that gold lead is sticking. Just around 3,000. There's not much they can do. Coming at 4,000 now as they've been farming these waves out. Top lane is going to be pushing, but TSM is in no position to really utilize any of these. Rift Herald for now. We'll see who gets that. Probably Sven Skarin to keep these moving. They're going to continue to try and control the jungle as much as possible. And just get farm well, on their main carries. Another big thing that's coming up for TSM is Baron because that has so much more pull uh, than, it, than the other neutral objectives on, on the map right now. And even sieging oh up goodness. is like a little bit risky. But TSM can just control vision across Baron's side. Rush. I, I so, mean, we can, we can take a break here and just watch this escape of Rush or attempted escape. His mark spawned in TSM's jungle. So he went for it. Uh, oh. <laughs> ah, there it is. Push That's the displacement <laughs> right there. But, um, yeah, earlier when I was saying I didn't think Rush would be crazy enough to go for the scuttle in the river, he actually went for the one no, idea. He's going to go for the TSM's jungle. <laughs> jungle uh, that's going to hurt because now they have to defend this potentially 4v5 if Hansi teleports in. That's another reason why you don't expect Cloud9 games to be Cloud9 getting bled out. They get bored pretty quickly and yep. just go for stuff <laughs> like that. Oh, they're doing Rift Herald. Maybe I can just take this Raptor Camp over here. <laughs> oh, wait. The worst no. part is, is his smite triggered the ward that he was on, and he knew he was dead. You just don't see it coming. He used too much to get out. He did use his flash. He actually thought he could make it out in the end. Unfortunately, did not. And we see Team Solo Mid working this game much, much better. It was actually quite worrying to see how fast Game 1 went in favor of Cloud9. Obviously not for Cloud9 fans, but for TSM to kind of right the wrongs this fast. A first pick, Nidalee, from Sven Skarin, who's actually been having trouble himself this season, showing quite strong here in the quarterfinals. It's definitely been helpful, but when does TSM crack the next barrier? They seem to have been stopped here by Cloud9 after all that. And that's why I, sometimes I actually really do like the knee-jerk reaction champ select where you just ban everything that just beat you. Because hmm. yep. through Cloud9, Cloud9 draft this time around completely right. one-sided here, full physical damage, and TSM can now take a breath after that first game because they got beaten very quickly. Uh, this game is going to do a lot to reset their mentality. You know, if you can go even it up like this in a one versus one where you feel like you had control the entire time and you felt confident for the last 20 plus minutes, yeah. Yeah. then TSM are going to be very, very, you know, in a much better mental state to go into game three and continue this series. Total reset for sure. And you get the flip side from C9, right? You just won that game and now this is happening. I was saying that Rush gets kindred again. He's flowing into that champion after a great pick, and now he's not having the same game. Little mind things here and there, but at this level, I'm sure they're trying to brush them off as soon as possible and focus on what is necessary. Core items on the side. Nashers finished along with that. Zanya is now the Rod of Ages still building up there for Sense Garen. He's going for it. And Hauncer, there's that Frozen Heart. Just finished it up. He's going he's for that next mark. <laughs> that on it. Nope. He's got nothing else to do. Yeah, he's going to get it. Suckers. That pesky little kindred. That's four. <laughs> yeah, found, Cloud9 are in that. Uh, let's farm for late mode because they yeah. just want to get to actually max items. Uh, by the end of the game, when everyone has six items and everyone's got their last whispers and armor penetrations, then it you can, you know, it comes down to more about picking people off and being out of position for those scene fights or big Baron steals and True. big plays. Cloud9 are more banking on big plays now uh, than than the. You know, standard mid-game team fight here with that TSMR. Yeah, they're hoping for that 35-minute team fight where death timers are the largest difference from this season to last season. Because if you lose a team fight mm -hmm. 
five for zero, four for one, take 35 a lot. minutes. You can potentially win the game clean yeah. off of that one team fight. The other thing that, you know, they could, you can always hope for is catching a straggler here. Maybe TSM get lazy while they're, uh, you know, going for the stranglehold on the map and they're spreading out, trying to grab the gold mm -hmm. on all areas of the map. Wow. Somebody's out of position, maybe you can pick them off and uh, snag something that way. This time though, it's actually Jensen is gonna have to pop those plays because top lane is coming down as well. The duo's coming. Wow. It doesn't quite cut them off, but they get a significant amount of damage. Yeah, the Callisto. He's got itchy burnt, trigger though. finger there with hey. the Could he use that to potentially bait Baron with the vision control they yep. have? Especially with Callisto on the team 24 minutes in. And that is the next a natural that. move for them, but they're playing it real slow. Dragon is live. That's where Sven Skarin is directing his attention to. Yeah. Really great game from him. Every second he can, he's been trying to give Rush trouble. Just at the Gromp more than once. They were able to take the blue, which he is wearing right now from Cloud9. They will get theirs on Bjergsen, and TSM is definitely playing a game that's going to make Cloud9 think twice here about what they can bring into the next game. Doublelift playing very strong this one, as well as Yellowstar. They started things off early was with, uh, along with Sven Skarin's Rome. Since then, Cloud9 has not been able to repair yeah, you can't really repair. Just try and get more gold. Oh, there's that pick I was talking oh, about. Oh, dear. They find a straggler. A lot of damage in return, though, so probably have to retreat after that. But any little bit of gold is good because it gets you closer to yep. some armor penetration items. I think that Jensen's going to turn this phage into uh, Black Cleaver, actually, to try and shred for the whole team. Uh, get off some of those AOE uh, Zed swipes in the middle there. Any right. extra armor shred does help the squad. Right now, though, Hauntzer's in his god mode. Got full armor with uh, Frozen Heart, Sunfire, and Ninja Toppy. Yep. And aside from that little whoopsie from Yellowstar, the rest of the TSM team is building very defensively, very early on. Already, Rylai's coming through as the next item for Bjergsen on top of the Zonias, but... Oh boy, that's Fence oh, Garrett. He buddy. seems to be still alive. Lambs or Spike goes down. Rush should be able to waltz out of this one. One last hit. Will not burn him down. He is oh. fine there. It looks like Bjergsen actually is going to go down in this situation. The calling goes backwards. He flashes out. Svensk Garen goes down, however. Bjergsen uses both baits. Call comes in with the flash <laughs> forward. And here's Ball Scout <gasps> to go down. What is no. happening <laughs> in this fight? That's A what you double get. kill for Hanser. <laughs> 9 to 4, 26 minutes in. TSM uh, wipes down Cloud9. That's where you're not supposed <laughs> that's, to be called. That's back what to you team get fight. for living on the edge like that. Sometimes <laughs> you fall off the edge. Oh dear, that's going to be... in there for the smash. Looks like it's going to be the Baron of TSM. I mean, that was that was kind of Cloud9 trying to take the game to TSM a little bit. They thought they'd see the fight. They got Bjergsen very low. They killed Spence Garen. Uh, but they also were very low. And instead of just running away, yeah. uh, and they allow Haunter to... And flash double kill him. Yeah, TSM are happy to even sacrifice someone's life to, if it means that it'll force a team fight. Because yes. they can just outstat Cloud9 so hard with Cloud9 being all armor. And anyway, look at this DPS from Bjergsen. Yeah. Now, Rush wants to stay there for the heal uh, and then has to flash out at the end as both teleports come in. Bjergsen yeah. with this early zone just completed as well that we talked about. And then he flashes right afterwards so the cone can't close him. And Rush is thinking he's going to get a recall here. But Hunter, Hi, Hi is actually let's see the his one. Reaction time Hi is the reason that he died. Oh. Hunter, Hunter never even saw two for one. Rush. Two yeah. for one special. Hi is actually the one that just killed Rush. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, bud. Team captain. Team captain. Don't recall here. It's dangerous. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> That's. But I would have gotten away with it if you didn't. No. Yeah. Just don't recall there. You lured Hunter over. <laughs> Big time control for TSM though now. 304 on the Azir. The unstoppable Hauntzer, who also has a QSS here, just in case Jensen tried to Black Cleaver 1v1 him. QSS let that mark away real quick. But yeah. Cloud9 again going for a fight because they see Maokai and Nidalee off to the side. Oh, that's an interesting, they got him. interesting call. Fate's call on the depth charge, but they're still going to be in the same spot as you grouped together on that situation. And Cloud9 actually being pushed back here. Spence Garen, solo front line on this guy until Hauntzer and Bjergsen get the soldiers up there. And they are still going hard on this. Nobody can even break Hauntzer right now. Bjergsen's running out of mana. This is going to be a tough fight to continue. Ball's now in range for all three. And they are just separating, picking and choosing, and surgically removing Cloud9 from the map. That's how strong it is to have this full armor Maokai versus this C9 squad. 
they got demolished without Hanser even being there. But once he got there, even though it was a, they were outnumbered, they still turn it around. Yeah, all carries were alive for Cloud9, and Hanser just did not care. Walked straight into him. Oh, that is Cloud9 relenting though. Oh dear. How you know when you've stayed too long? Oh dear. Usually when you're dead. Speaky. Usually when oh, you're dead. Oh, oh wait a minute! I got him! Oh, he got him! You gotta be kidding me! <laughs> Hanser oh, fought the skills okay. and goes down valiantly. Tank him out, Hey, we still got some more action here, huh? huh? Yeah. Okay. Was that just his kills, or is that just the two kills shut down? <laughs> still, he gets good gold out of that. Oh, Hauntzer yeah. is a beast. Uh, Four, one, and five. First death picks up his thorn mail on top of the Quicksilver and yeah, still hanging on the Giant's Belt. He knows what he needs, just stats. All right, so we're going to start at the very beginning of this one. Death's Charge, Yellow Star. That was weird. Probably should have turned himself backwards. <laughs> he ends up dying. But at the same time, now the team fight crew is here. Spence Garen, the T5 crew is Hauntzer. <laughs> it's, it's, I think it's Hauntzer and Bjergsen, right? I mean, Bjergsen is the line, DPS, of course. Best but. tank for the situation and best backline damage for the situation in Maokai and Azir. Also, oh. we didn't even point out that Spence Garen escaped there. That was yeah. ridiculous Pretty how nice. he was able to hop back out after the uh, Zonias of his own. But yeah, there it is. Hauntzer finally gets to fight. Yep. Fantastic. So helpful now that the alt follows Malkai. <laughs> Your damage reduction goes with you. Level 16 himself. Oh, wow. Yeah, two levels over balls now. Distortion boots as well, looking to make even more plays. The rest of the team haunts her 16 to Jensen's. So they're getting that full damage out of their ultimates now. That gold lead, by the way, growing finally for Team Solo mid. They found a way to break down the walls of Cloud9. It was phase first. And the biggest thing for TSM now is that Haunter's teleport is up. So he'll be there even quicker if there is a team fight that breaks out. If Haunter's teleport is up, TSM can feel so much more secure. They're also going to have a banner. Buddy, yeah. somewhere. I don't think they've used it just yet, but two Zanyas, the banner in another lane. A lot of things on the plate now for Cloud9 to think about during these fights. Jensen kind of fronts, puts himself up front there. Glacial Fisher goes out, but it's not where the team really gets stopped. TSM can free fight this and kite it backwards. The health bars are not looking good for Team Solomate as Cloud9 engages once again. Rush dead on the outside there. High about to go down. And now C9 has to turn tail run. and start to run towards the base. Haunts are now at the initiation. He goes in and Svens Karen's more than happy to be his bash buddy. They're now onto balls. They're going to take him down. The turret will follow shortly after. I don't think Jensen wants to stand too close to the explosion. The same thing. Cloud9 can all in before Haunter's there and burst down double if they do it a second time here. But the teleport is up, he gets there in time, and they're able to clean up. Again, TSM are very happy to sacrifice someone, literally anyone on the team, if it means that it's going to force a team fight with Haunter in the middle. Uh, they're, yeah. like, if, as long as Bjergsen or Doublelift stays up and there's some yeah. DPS on the back line uh, behind Haunter's tanking, uh, TSM are happy to take that. Yeah, it's just so hard for Zed to team fight against this team that yeah. TSM's put together. I mean, Bjergsen is 616 on Azir with Azonias. Like, he puts out so much DPS throughout a team fight, and plus he has the added safety of the active. Yeah, I mean, this Cloud9 was just trying to take advantage of the channel time of teleport. Uh, so they had four or five seconds without Hans in the fight, but they were not able to clean enough of the damage dealers. They did kill Doublelift, but Bjergsen still at the back of the fight with half health. And like once Hanser is here, Jensen can't get close to him because that would just open him up to getting killed by Azir, and Hanser can literally just walk into the turret and the rest of Cloud9, so very easy for them to... And he'll back up that. the full while he's taking turret damage. Like, he had less life before he was tanking the turret than he had after he was tanking the turret because of the passive heal on the auto. I mean, it's another one of those reasons you pick Maokai with Azir, because what you'd want from Cloud9 is like a last pick against a Maokai, but we want the highest damage possible magic damage mage. Oh, it's Azir. But TSM already had him in the draft phase. So Cloud9 had gone for the yep. very early 25-minute snowball game, and they fall behind early. And now they're just, they have to play desperately. Yeah, I mean, it was no secret. TSM are drafting at the strongest team fight comp that they can get. Yeah. And they got that. <laughs> the they essential did it. Yeah, exactly. And specifically, they first picked the earliest game jungler to buy them time to reach this team fight phase. And Sven Skaren did a very good job shutting down Rush to make sure the Cloud9 lanes couldn't get ahead. Mm -hmm. 
But they still haven't won the game. They're they're very close though, with two inhibitors down. Very convincing at that. They have not struggled at all getting through this game. Maybe for a minute, but still found a way through. It was Haunter being gigantic, and he still is. Able to make plays whenever they want right now. Really just kind of have Cloud9 on the end of a thread waiting to tug on it. Over towards Baron. Looks like they're actually going to pull on that string right now. They'll say, let's go. Bring the fight home. Right to yeah. the Baron pit. Azir kills it so fast. Kalista also secures it. It's the safest Baron rush you'll see. And there it is. Is it the follow-up, though? On to high. He's the first one. It's fine for Haunter to be up front. Jensen going very, very low as he tries to 4v1. Well, they got Nobody Hunter. can get past the wall. <laughs> hey, very interesting. Nice play, but Cloud9 still kiting this one out. Low HP bars on both sides here. Who's going to be the next finalized kill? There goes Sneaky, and that's going to be high falling as well. As soon as TSM can assess the fight, they get it the way they want it, and now Balls is going to try to flash away from this. TSM down the mid lane. They killed that Maokai, though. Yeah, they killed Hotzer. It only cost them four kills on their the side. It only yeah. cost them. Ah, uh, the too game. bad. Anyway, TSM, that's exactly what they wanted to do. Force yep. the Baron fight when they're that far ahead. Secure it very quickly, even if they don't get the Baron, which was high likelihood that they would, yeah. they'd still be able to force and engage with the Maokai, and here we go. What a clean game coming in from Team Solo mid after a loss in Game 1 to Cloud9. We are all tied up here in the quarterfinals. 1-1 as TSM takes Game 2. So this is what people were talking about when they said this series was going to be closer than you expected, because we didn't expect the series to be close after Cloud9 crushed the first game. But they swapped back the sides. They very quickly pivoted off their pick and ban strategy. They used the blue side first pick advantage to get Nidalee. And then